Ladies and gentlemen of the Corps, faculty and staff and guests, good morning and welcome to the 22nd celebration of the life and legacy of an extraordinary VMI graduate, Jonathan Myrick Daniels, VMI class of 1961. And the fifth presentation of the Jonathan Daniels 61 Humanitarian Award. Please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem and the invocation by Chaplain Phillips. I invite you to join me for the invocation this morning. Our Lord, it is appropriate that we gather this morning in the midst of a very busy week and a very busy day to pause, to honor, and to remember the legacy of Jonathan Daniels, a VMI man who represented that which is good, right, and noble. 
We honor a man who willingly laid down his own life to save an innocent young African-American girl from the blast of a shotgun that was fired at her simply because of the color of her skin. We recognize that there is no greater display of love, service, and sacrifice than that which was demonstrated on that August day in 1965. And we pray that you would instill within each of us that same courage, character, and commitment that we see in Jonathan Daniels. We also gather today to recognize and give thanks for Miss Carolyn Miles, a woman who has devoted her life to sacrificial service and to the care and well-being of children around the globe. We recognize that her service is very much in keeping with the character of Jonathan Daniels and very much in accordance with the values, ideals, and principles which we espouse at VMI. So as we gather this morning, Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts and minds, give us each a vision for service and leadership consistent with the legacy of Jonathan Daniels and the example of Mrs. Miles. We pray this all in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Again, welcome to this special occasion as we honor Jonathan Daniels' memory and the ultimate sacrifice he made while exemplifying the virtues of humanitarian service and improving the lives for others. On the stage this morning, we are honored to have Mrs. Carolyn Miles, President and CEO of the Save the, the Children organization, about whom I will have more to say in a few moments. And also joining us today is Mr. William Bolin, VMI class of 1973 and President of the VMI Board of Visitors. Cadet Matthew H. Cotton, President of the VMI Promaji Club, and Colonel Robert Phillips, VMI Class of 1987 and Chaplain to the Corps of Cadets. At the time of his death, Daniels was a seminary student at the Episcopal Divinity School in Cambridge when he had the calling to join the Civil Rights Movement in Alabama. He was on August 20th, 1965, while working to assist in voter registration efforts Daniels was murdered in front of a country store in Hainville as he pushed Ruby Sales, a young African-American teenager, to safety and took the direct shotgun blast from an angry and intolerant local citizen. A second shotgun blast also severely wounded a young Catholic priest from Chicago named Richard Morris Rowe, who also had answered Dr. King's call to the clergy for assistance in the civil rights movement. As news of this tragedy spread, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. issued a statement calling Daniel's sacrifice one of the most heroic Christian deeds of which I have heard in my entire ministry was performed by Jonathan Daniels. For his heroic and sacrificial action, Daniels has been recognized along with Dr. King as one of only 15 modern day martyrs of the Episcopal Church in Canterbury Cathedral, England. And as for the rest of the story, that 16-year-old girl, Ruby Sales, went on to earn degrees from the Tuskegee Institute, Manhattanville College, and Princeton University. She later earned a master's in divinity degree from the Episcopal Divinity School where Jonathan Daniels had studied. She was a college professor for many years, at several prominent universities, and has devoted her entire life to racial justice and helping others. And I add that she is still going strong today at those endeavors to include participating in a number of times in this celebratory event at VMI. In short, Jonathan's sacrifice was not in vain, and I think that he would be very proud of what she has gone on to do with her life after his death. Unfortunately, Ms. Sales could not be with us today. However, I would like to recognize that Catholic priest from Chicago, Mr. Richard Morris Rowe, who is with us in attendance, and I ask that he stand, be recognized, and receive our applause. <clears throat> in 1992, the Promaji Club initiated a Jonathan Daniels Award, and several years later, its leadership graciously agreed to give the Institute exclusive use of the name. And at its December 
1997 meeting, the VMI Board of Visitors voted to establish the Jonathan M. Daniels 61 Humanitarian Award. Only the second time in the history of the Institute that the Board has taken such action. The first being the award, as you know, of the VMI Newmarket Medal. The Daniels Award emphasizes the virtues of humanitarian, humanitarian public service and recognizes individuals who have made significant personal sacrifices to protect or improve the lives of others. The inaugural presentation was made to President James Earl Carter in 2001. Since then, it has only been awarded three times to other individuals, former U.S. Ambassador Andrew Young in 2006, humanitarian worker Dr. Paul Abair in 2011, and Congressman John Lewis in 2015. In addition to this award, one of the four named archways in the VMI barracks is dedicated to Daniels, as is the adjoining memorial courtyard. Dr. Hebert, VMI class of 1968, the third award winner, is here this morning, and I ask that he stand. He is currently a visiting professor at VMI this year. Paul. <clears throat> As we witness the current social and political climate, I think it's important that we reflect recognize and uplift the sacrifices and examples of such individuals as Jonathan Daniels in their quest to improve social and humanitarian injustice. Racism certainly has no place in our society today, and we should continue to strive and do better. At VMI, we have an expectation to foster a culture of civility, mutual respect, friendship, and fairness. VMI has the honor and privilege today of presenting this award to Mrs. Carolyn Miles, an inspired and dedicated leader of a global child advocacy organization that works to improve the nutrition, health, education, and the well-being of over 166 million children in the United States and 120 other countries. <clears throat> Born in Connecticut, Mrs. Miles grew up in the steel town of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As a teenager, she was a competitive swimmer where she learned teamwork and leadership skills. And after high school, she attended Bucknell University in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, graduating in 1983 with a degree in animal behavior. And after working for a brief time for an international chemical company, Mrs. Miles earned her MBA at the Darden School at the University of Virginia. She then married and moved to New York City where she worked for American Express. That job sent her around the world. And it was on one of those trips, and I suspect she'll tell us today, to the Philippines in 1995 that she was inspired to help children in need. In 1996, she returned to Connecticut and joined the Save the Children organization. And there she rose to the position of chief operating officer, a position that took her to, on field work to 70 countries. In 2011, she was named chief executive of that organization. <clears throat> the, board of, <clears throat> excuse me, the Board of Save the Children has often said of Mrs. Miles that she is the personification of the organization's mission, which is saving children, and she can't do it enough fast enough to save kids around the world. Mrs. Miles has served on numerous boards of similar organizations and Bucknell University honored her with their 2011 Distinguished Citizen Award. In 2015, she was named in Fortune Magazine's 50, one of 50th greatest world leaders for that year. All who know and work with her praise her sense of mission, her passion, her extraordinary commitment, and her resilience. It therefore, it gives me great pleasure to ask Mr. Boland, President of our VMI Board, to present the Daniel 61 Humanitarian Award to Carolyn Miles, along with an honorarium for $25,000 to be given to Save the Children organization in her honor. Mr. Bowen. Thank you, General P., and thank everybody for coming to this very important event on behalf of the Board of Visitors of the Virginia Military Institute 
It's my pleasure to present the Jonathan Daniels Humanitarian Award to Carolyn Miles. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, General P, and thank you, Bill Boland, uh, and thank you to all of you. This is an amazingly humbling honor. And um, I was telling some folks earlier that when I was first asked about this award, uh, the first thing I did was looked up the story about Jonathan Daniels because I didn't know the story. And when I read that story, I said, how could I not? as the leader of Save the Children, accept an award on behalf of and in honor of this amazing man. So, so thank you so much. I had the opportunity to meet this morning actually with a group of the honors cadets, and I hope, I'm sure that some of them are here right now, uh, an amazing group, and I got a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with them, and I was really impressed by their their leadership, their academic rigor of the programs they were taking on, and mostly by their interest in the world. And my speech is going to be a little bit about why we need that interest, particularly at this time. So all of you have already started, and I'm going to talk mostly the, to, the, to the cadets in the room. All of you have already started to put your mark on the world. And just by attending VMI, you've made a decision to committing to living your life by a code of honor and duty. But you've also dedicated your life to learning and to leadership and to making a positive impact. My appreciation for the choices that you've made is actually very personal. Um, I'm here with my husband, Brendan, who's here with me, who graduated from West Point and spent six years uh, in the U.S. Army. And I'm also the mother of Patrick, who is a Special Forces, just made Special Forces uh, qualification and will be spending the next two years uh, training as a Special Forces medic. So the life that you've chosen is familiar to me and um, it's one that I, I really have a great deal of respect for. I know that this life is intellectually and physically demanding, but I also know that your greatest strength lies in the strength of your character. And that's really what we're here to honor today. As I said, I'm extremely humbled to receive the Jonathan Daniels Humanitarian Award named for this young man, not much older than you in here in this room, who lived the values he learned at VMI and he lived those until his last moments. And I'm very honored to also be the first woman to receive this award. And I want to give a special message to the women cadets who are here. I am sure that this was not the easiest decision to come here. And I'm sure there were other decisions that you could have made. But I spend a lot of my work focused on making sure that girls and young women have every opportunity to be everything that they can be. And I want to thank you for making the decision that you made and putting forward that role model for so many girls. Jonathan Daniels was able to do something that we honestly, I think right now, don't see enough of. He was able to imagine life from another person's perspective. Although he grew up in New Hampshire, he graduated as the valedictorian here at VMI, and shortly thereafter he joined the civil rights movement and moved to Alabama to advocate for the rights of African Americans. This was a time when not so many people made that decision, especially a young white man of privilege got involved in fighting for the civil rights of black people. But he did this by looking at the world from another person's point of view. 
He saw something wrong, and he set about writing it. He saw his fellow men and women being mistreated and did not hesitate to stand alongside them. And finally and fatefully, he put himself in front of 17-year-old Ruby Sales, and he gave the ultimate sacrifice for that action. So I'm tremendously inspired by his service, and we honor him today and every day in this sacrifice. And I think this idea of putting yourself in another person's shoes is so important, and I know it's something that all of you will have the opportunity to do in your careers. This is also very much the outlook of Save the Children, and I'll talk a little bit about the organization. We started our work actually 100 years ago, and the organization was founded on one simple idea, and that idea is that children have rights. Children have the right to survive, they have the right to an education, getting a basic education, and they have the right to be protected from harm. And that's what our founder, who was a young woman who founded the organization, believed in. And at that time, in 1919, that was actually not a very uh, popular idea. She particularly advocated for the rights of children who had been left orphaned by World War I. And many people said, why should we care about those children? Why do we care if they have enough to eat? Why do, they care? Why do we care if they go to school or are protected from harm? But she said, it's actually our responsibility to care for every child. And today, we believe that every single child, no matter where they live, no matter what the color of their skin, no matter what country they're from, no matter who their parents are, have those basic rights. A right to survive, a right to an education, and a right to be protected from harm. And we do that work right here in the United States and in about 120 countries around the world. And it's really about helping children reach their full potential. In my time at Save the Children, I've traveled to, I think I'm on country 92 at this point, um, all over the world. And everywhere I go, one of the things that I find is that children actually want the same thing. They want to play, they want to learn, they want to be kids, and they want to grow up to be everything they can be. And every parent wants that same thing too. The context and the challenges are obviously different in different places, but the similarities are much stronger than the differences. We might want to stop and think a little bit about the founding of Save the Children and when it was founded. And I think one of the things that really strikes me now a hundred years later is the issue of children caught in conflict. So the organization started because of the impact of war on children, and we're still actually really fighting that battle. This weekend, I'll go to Yemen to visit our programs there and to see the tremendous impact that that conflict is having on children. One of the most important things we're doing now is working on this issue. Nearly one in five children around the world are living in conflict zones right now. Part of this is because the nature of conflict is changing. More and more conflict and war are raged in urban settings, in civilian contexts, in places where children are. There are also deliberate campaigns against children in many wars. Schools are bombed, hospitals are bombed, towns are bombed. And armed conflicts are, are lasting much longer. So actually this month, we will celebrate, is not the right word, we will um, commemorate the beginning of the Syrian war eight years ago. So for many Syrian children, this is all they've ever known, is war. And increasingly, that battlefield is coming closer to children. This is not just a crisis for kids in their everyday life, but it's a mental crisis as well. So Save the Children does spend a lot of time on the psychological issues of war and their impact on children. There are three things that we are actually setting out in our 100th year to do about this issue. 
One is we want leaders around the world to uphold international standards. There actually are international laws against targeting schools and hospitals and communities, and we want those laws to be upheld. Secondly, when they're not upheld, we want perpetrators of crimes to be held accountable. We think that's really important and sends a message to the world that it won't be tolerated. And third, we want to make sure that there is a lot more action on the ground by organizations like ours and others that can act to help children. Humanitarian funding usually does not focus on children in cases of conflict and war. We need that to change. So we want to turn the tide for these vulnerable children. But maybe you're sitting there asking yourself why you should care about this and why I use this speech to talk about this to all of you. And I would tell you it's because children today need leaders like the ones in this room. They need leaders that are going to stand up and say, these are the things that are right for people. We need you to speak up, step out, and declare that the kind of treatment that's happening in war to children is unacceptable. And I believe that the only way this will change is that if leaders like you take these issues into consideration. I'm not here to say we will have no more wars because I don't believe that that's actually true. But I am here to say that we need to change the way those wars impact children and their future. And after all, that's something that's really worth fighting for. So I share these stories not to make you despair or dismay, but to call on you for your own leadership. I know that many of you will be commissioned and you'll join the military in a variety of branches after your service here, your, your education here at VMI, and I know some of you will not. Either way, you can actually do something about this issue. And certainly, if you're in the military, you can do something about this issue. Leaders need those like you and those like Jonathan Daniels that look at the world from other points of view. So I would ask you to look at the world from a child's point of view. My own realization of this work, uh, General P mentioned it, came a long time ago now. I've been at Save the Children for 21 years. But when I was in the Philippines and I was traveling actually with my family, I was in a car and I had my six-month-old son in my arms. That's the one who's now the Special Forces guy. So he was six months old, and we were driving into Manila, and we stopped at a stoplight. And in Manila, there are slums that line the road on the way to the airport, if any of you have ever been there. And we stopped at a stoplight, and a woman came up to the, to the car to beg. And she had a baby in her arms, who was probably the same age as Patrick. And we looked at each other through the window, and that's when, for me, that light bulb went off, that Patrick would have every opportunity in the world to be anything he wanted to be. And that baby in that mother's arms would have no opportunities at all. And it was only because of who those children were born to. And that changed my path, and I started working for Save the Children very shortly after that. So I tell you that story because it's important for you all to put yourselves in the shoes of others and to think about what's important to you. VMI has a very rich tradition of producing leaders. Military leaders, of course, but also those who have dedicated their lives to making the world better for humankind. As I said, I know some of you, certainly many of you, will pursue a career in the military. But leaders from VMI include both military leaders, like George C. Marshall, Paul Hebert, who is here today, who got this award several years ago, 
And you also have alumni who have won medals of honor and Oscars. So you have leaders from many, many sides. Among you are also members of the VMI Cadets Without Borders, who volunteered to bring clean water and sanitary facilities to remote Bolivian villages, as well as many of you who, as individuals, I know have made a difference for the world. And of course, this legacy, again, includes Jonathan Daniels and the legacy that he left for VMI. As you begin to think about your path after VMI, I know you will build upon what you've learned here through your experiences, and you'll be entering adulthood with a strong foundation of knowledge, strength, and character. But I hope along the way you'll also remember about these children that I talked to you about. These children need leaders like you. And I'll tell you one last story before I, before I close. Uh, I was in Syria, this was probably four years ago now, and I was on a soccer field that Save the Children had built in the middle of a giant refugee camp in a place called Zatari. And I was talking to young people there, and I talked to a young boy who was from Syria and had ended up in this camp, and he'd been there probably for about two years. And I asked him to tell me a little bit about his life and what it was like, and he said, you know, he's very proud. He said, I, I went, I was in high school, I was a straight-A student, I was on my way to university, and that was my path. And I said, well, what are you thinking about now? And he said, I said, what do you think about your future? And he, he looked around this enormous refugee camp, and he said, I don't think I have a future. And that is the worst thing that a child could ever say to you. So I would ask all of you to think about how you make a better future for the world's children and how you use your leadership to do that. Thank you. Carolyn, thank you for your interesting and thoughtful remarks this morning and for honoring VMI and the legacy of Daniels by accepting this award. I also wish to thank all of our guests and friends who travel many from great distance to be with us here today. Following this ceremony, there will be a parade at 1.30, 13.30 by the Corps of Cadets honoring Mrs. Miles. Dress warmly. I now call upon Chaplain Phillips to give the benediction after which these proceedings are adjourned. Bob? Please join me for the, uh, for the benediction. Our Lord, as we go out from this place, I pray that you would fill us with wisdom, revelation, and compassion. Strengthen us and drive us until every, our every thought, word, and deed reflect a faith that purifies our hearts overcomes the world, works by love, and connects us to you and to those around us. And we pray this all in your holy name. Amen. You are dismissed. Your speech was excellent.